Hey guys, Wednesday here. So I've been having problems with my extruder on my stealth burner. Um, basically for no reason, it's just been stopping extruding. Uh, you think, oh okay, it must be a jam or something, but when you heat heat the nozzle up and then bring it forward to, to do a uh, change out, it, that you can basically push, push the filament straight through. It's no problem at all. So, um, I'm not too sure, I've oh, got a bit of a lag here, <laughs> nice. Um, so I'm not too sure, so I've done a bit of research um, and Dr. Dave has done a video on how to adjust the, um, the little squishy screw in the, in the stealth burner. And by, by squishy screw I mean this here, this one here. Um, a lot of people remove this but uh, there's been a few guys that have had trouble and they've put it back in again. So, what I've done is I have basically adjusted this. I tried it as per the video, but it didn't quite work exactly. This uh, I couldn't actually get any tension, so I wasn't actually not getting enough tension on the grip for the um, for the for the filament. So what I did was I followed the video and then just adjusted a little bit to um, to get it to work. So. Um, I, yeah, so so it's a combination of using this here, this um, spindle, and this um, this little piece here, this uh, squishy screw. <clears throat> so without further ado, so you look, if you have a look there, it's actually out. It's not flush. So um, so yeah, so without further ado, we're just going to jump in, and we'll. Um, go on to the printer and, and I've stripped, I've pretty much pulled the top half of the extruder apart in place and um, left everything else assembled and I'm just going to make the adjustments and show you how I did it. So it's going to be a bit of a proof as a pudding to see whether it's going to be a successful uh, fix or not. So I'm just going to see whether this print runs because I haven't I've run this print four times now and it's jammed or stopped printing at about 35 percent it's at 37 now uh, and it's still going so um, I'll go and check that as well but we'll cut to the video on how I did the adjustments cheers hey guys and girls Wester here Okay, I've got my stealth burner apart. I've had lots of problems with the extrusion. Uh, basically, just stops extruding for no reason. So, uh, after some research, there seems to be a relationship, or the, I think there is a relationship between that, and I don't know if you can see in here, but there's a, that little, um, they call it the squishy screw. So, down inside here, you can see there's that little screw just in here, just this one here. Now, um, what I've found is that the best way to get it, to, the best way I could get it to work for this particular unit was um, because what was happening is the it was stopping extruding halfway through a job, um, not and not all the time. Just and then you'd go to uh, you, you could just push this straight through the extruder, heat it up to temperature and push it straight through with this all clamped up no matter how tight you screwed the this adjustment spindle up. So what I did was there's a, uh, Dr. Dave's got a video out um, but it kind of got me on the path but it didn't work exactly because um, yeah it just, just didn't work so but because I couldn't actually get any tension on it after I did exactly what was mentioned. But anyway, um, so what I've found the best thing to do is, so you wind this, the um, adjusting screw out so that this, this here is flopping around a little bit. So there's no, basically, so there's no preload on the spring at all. And so this little piece here just flops around a little bit. Oh, hang on, I'll just turn this around a little bit so we can see... Better, a little bit better <laughs> um, so basically this little squishy screw in the back here what it does is it holds out 
the um, arm when it's locked close it, it, it slightly presses this arm out so that it's not putting so much um, engagement pressure on the mating teeth on the gear uh, and which which is actually just forcing the um, I, I believe it's forcing the, uh, the the two apart if you don't have that gap in there um, and I've tried screwing it right in so that so that it's all and taking it right out and it doesn't make any difference so once you actually screw so what, what I've found is that uh, you need a Allen screw or what is this one I think it's a 2.2 2, 2 or 2.5 and it goes up through this little hole here this one into the into the screw you've got to kind of what wiggle it around a bit and what I found was I've done it right up nipped it up so that it's tight backed it off half one one and a half turns and then just a, a one flat and what that does is that is it has has allowed so you do that with this completely tensioned up so screw this right up so there's full tension on it push it closed and then click it in like so and then this here if you actually have this screwed in too far you won't you can't turn this gear without it crunching and I found that um, to get it spinning completely freely without having any crunching at all is about um, two and a half turns but that didn't work for this because it pushed it out too far so one and a half turns was my sweet spot so I don't know if this is actually Oh yeah, there it is. You can see that it's contacting the arm there now. Um, so it, as you screw that out, it pushes this arm back just a fraction. Um, and that was a sweet spot for me, is, is 1.6 uh, turns. So one and a half and then one flat. And that made it... Uh, so then what you do is you open it up again, wind your tension off. There's a lot of tension on there wind that right off so that it, this is floppy again so this piece here is all floppy that bit and then just do it up just so that it takes up the tension and then I go half I, I go half a turn one turn one and a half turns and then just a fraction more this has bent this screw I've had so much tension on it over the time so what that will do is so when I I'll put my piece of um, filament through straight through there right through the bottom out the bottom then cl click it into place and then now when I hold this gear at the back with my thumb I can put I, I'm actually pulling a lot of tension on that it's I can't pull it out You can make it move, slip, but you're putting a fair bit of pressure on there. Okay, and that's that seems to be, and that's what I'm going to try and see if that works. So I just wanted to document that, um, and then we'll see whether it's a success or not. So take up your spring lash and then do it up uh, a turn and a half to a turn and three quarters. And um, so now I'll just put this all back together again, and then I'll set my lash up, my gear, my gear lash up, and we'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to put this little video together, just so that we could crack into it. Cheers. We're still hovering out.